everybody. So typically, on and especially on this channel, when we deal with AI, we're dealing with neural networks, deep learning, etc. Uh, and I like to push the boundaries of neural networks and deep learning specifically. But there is a um, alternative and a, a much older method than deep learning, which is what deep learning is based off of, right? Essentially, uh, in the 1950s, you had Turing machines, and they were based off of symbolic AI, uh, and also what is known now as classical AI or good old-fashioned artificial intelligence. And this was big from the 50s until the 80s, but it's still very prominent today in a few different areas and industries and sectors, right? So this type of uh, classical or good old fashioned AI is still widely utilized and important for industries like law, finance, anything where you want a grounded answer. The good thing about good old fashioned AI or classical AI, as opposed to uh, neural networks, is that it is deterministic, right? So neural networks are probabilistic in nature, and there's always a probabilistic element that gets added to them. Whereas that probabilistic element is lacking in um, symbolic AI or classical AI. So it's a branch of artificial intelligence that focuses on representing knowledge and reasoning using high level human readable symbols and logic. It was the dominant paradigm in AI research from the mid 50s to the late 1980s, and it continues to be valuable in specific applications. So here's a breakdown of the key characteristics of and concepts of symbolic AI. One. Symbols and representation. Symbols. Symbolic AI represents systems represent knowledge using symbols, which are abstract representations of objects, concepts, and relationships in the world. These symbols can be words, numbers, logical propositions, or other abstract tokens. For example, uh, we can use uh, Fursemed, which is like a medicine, causes temp uh, 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 disease, causes temporary hearing loss, cat, mammal, on table, books are all symbols. And this will all make a lot of sense when we look at the code. So uh, knowledge representation. The core of a symbolic AI system <clears throat> is its knowledge base. This is a structured collection of facts, rules, and relationships expressed using symbols. Common knowledge representation formalisms include logic, semantic networks, frames, scripts, and production rules, which are all just different types of rules and logic. And the bottom line here is, is that um, like the only way that these models produce outputs is via inputs from these knowledge representations, so they literally can't hallucinate. <laughs> There's no probabilistic layer, right? Uh, two, reasoning and inference. Simple manipulation. Symbolic AI systems operate by manipulating these symbols according to predefined rules. This is where the intelligence comes in. The system doesn't understand the symbols in the same way that a human does, but it can follow the rules to derive new knowledge. Inference engines. These are the brains of a symbolic AI system. They apply logical rules to the knowledge base to infer new facts or answer queries, and common inference techniques include deduction, induction, abduction, and search. So uh, this deduction and induction is exactly why you would want to use these methods, right? And so up front, like, um, if it's all linear, it's all, it's all very straightforward. Uh, there's no probabilistic aspects in it. Where exactly, why exactly would you want to use it? Because if you have um, A plus B, and then you have within the system in there that A plus B equals a C, uh, it will be able to deduce that A plus B equals C, or it will be able to um, deduce or induce and utilize inductive and deductive logic off of the knowledge base, right? So it can, it's, um, allows you to take it like a step further than uh, traditional programming. Three key features and examples. It's explainable, very explainable. One of the strengths of symbolic AI is its explainability because the reasoning process is based on explicit rules. It's often possible to trace back how a system arrived at a particular conclusion. This is important for building trust and debugging, expert systems. These are classic examples of symbolic AI and they encode the knowledge of human experts in a specific domain. So like medical diagnosis, financial analysis, using rules and facts and like so for like these specific scientific and medical and legal uh financial where you need like very specific inputs and outputs these systems are amazing for expert systems planning systems these systems can create systems of actions to achieve a goal um like a robot assembling line or um and they can also utilize early NLP approaches, like uh, like your early NLP models were based off of this. So like um, uh, Lucy and those types of models. Uh, and then this does use logic prolog programming. So Prolog is a programming language based purely on logic. 
Uh, it's a declarative language where you describe what you want to achieve rather than how to achieve it. Uh, in this example, I'm, I'm utilizing this all in Python, and then so I'm, I'm coding it in Python, but Pro Prolog is very straightforward, just like um, it's a logic language. If you understand logic itself, it, like it's, I mean, it's literally logic. Yeah, and so the limitations of symbolic AI, uh, knowledge acquisition bottleneck, if the knowledge isn't in there, it, it, that's it. <laughs> Brittle systems, uh, like, I mean, the, again, if the knowledge isn't in there. Uh, common sense reasoning, representing and reasoning about common sense knowledge, the vast uh, has been proven extremely challenging for these models. Like they, they're, they, they don't reason or generalize very well as like, like 1% or less outside of what is in this database, right? Um, they can't handle uncertainty and like whether or not they're actually learning anything is, is up for debate. And then so with symbolic AI versus like your neural networks, symbolic AI is often contrasted with neural networks. And neural networks use distributed representations and learn from data through statistical methods. And these are very different approaches. So uh, with symbolic AI, it's all based off of symbols, rules, and logic. And then it's utilizing deduction and inference. Whereas with a neural network, it's distributed patterns of activation and it's utilizing statistical learning. And then everything else branches off from there, right? So modern relevance, while deep learning has dominated AI research in recent years, symbolic AI is still relevant and valuable in several areas. Hybrid systems is the main one, right? Like you can combine this with a neural network, like you, and like you could um, give a, a knowledge base or, or access to a hyper knowledge base uh, to a, a neural network. There's no reason why you can't, right? Um, knowledge representation and reasoning, robotics, and very specific applications. So in summary, symbolic AI represents a fundamental approach to AI based on symbols, logic, and rule-based reasoning where it has limitations. And then so the specific implementation that we're going to look at here is an LPLM model implementation, which is a very, uh, I get this from a research paper from uh, Cornell University and Storybrooke University uh, put out on February 13th, 2025 in which they uh, propose this particular model. I've reconstructed it here um, in utilizing Python instead of Prolog. And then so you can see essentially how the model works. We define our uh, database, right? And then so we define our database of facts. Uh, and then so in this instance, I'll skip down to the third one, the second one. So fir trees can grow in and then uh, it'll be human lungs and then blackbirds uh, fly bravely and Bob runs fast. And then we just uh, essentially uh, have our ability to query, add, and remove facts. So the network can, you know, like self-sustain the database itself and update the database. The database. Uh, then we need to uh, just do a little bit of like a uh, prolog uh, logic here for Python. Same thing here, we need to instantiate the database. And then this is where our model comes in. Like this is our, our model essentially, uh, right? And then so we're just, uh, we're giving it some logic, like the ability to parse NLP uh, and then to utilize like some sort of logic. So it, it, we can have it um, utilize like, um, and join statements. So like what causes, who flies, does the black and what can grow. And then we're essentially giving it logic and then what to do with this base logic, right? We're giving it 90% of what to do up front. Um, and then so we do some tests here um, and then so we'll test it on the questions. What causes temporary hearing loss? Who flies bravely? Does the blackbird fly bravely? And what can grow in human lungs? And then so what causes human, temporary human loss? No known causes found. Who flies bravely? Blackbirds fr fly bravely. Does the blackbird fly, fly bravely? Yes, it does. And what can grow in human lungs? Fir trees can grow in human lungs because that's exactly what it pulled from its database. Right? So whatever it pulls from its database is what it's going to put out here. Whatever it can't pull from the database, it's not going to pull down here. So like, that's the beauty of this. It's like um, you can 100% track these inputs and outputs and then not have to worry about it. And um, the, the benefit is, is that you're not fully programming this out, right? You're using logic as opposed to like full programming methods and methodologies. And then so it's a step removed. And then I'm removing it a step from Prolog by putting it into Python here. So um, you have some functionality and flexibility within this. And then a great, like the thing I want to highlight again within this is this might not seem cool up front for everyone, but um, as a hybrid system, this could be cool. Like, uh, 
having an LLM have access to an LPLM model would enhance an LLM model, in my opinion. Like that would make the LLM model a lot better. Just uh, if it's like uh, you know, here's a part of your brain that you know 100% is um, a database essentially and functions like a database. Like it's like another tool essentially, and, and, and it would have access to that. So I, I don't think there's a disadvantage to that overall. So that's why I'm highlighting this method. Like a lot of people would probably overlook these. Um, like. Uh, especially this, these types of methods overall, because it, it is, you know, symbolic AI and uh, good old fashioned AI. So uh, kind of overlooked when it comes to recent and modern research. But as you can see with this LPLM model, it's still making advancements in 2025 with regards towards the framework. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.